Thanks very much, Palessa. When Ambassador Charles Stith founded the Boston University's African Presidential Archives and Research Center 15 years ago, there were 11 democratically retired African heads of state and government. Through the years, the number has increased and is now standing at 50. This has created a need for more centers, particularly in Africa. So on Tuesday, that will be next Tuesday, together with the University of Mpumalanga, Ambassador Stith launched, or that was last Tuesday, I beg your pardon, Ambassador Stith launched the first African Presidential Leadership Center, and he joins us to tell a little bit about us. Good uh, about it. Good to have you here on the program. Good morning. Welcome. Good to be here. Thank you so very, very much. Um, all right, so I'm, I'm busy stumbling over everything I'm <laughs> saying because just fill me in. This happened on Tuesday. Yes. All right, how did it go? Uh, went extremely well. Uh, we were very fortunate. The former Prime Minister of Kenya, Raila Odinga, joined us for the uh, launch event. Uh, we had uh, close to 100 public and private sector leaders from South Africa and the region uh, in attendance. So we felt very, very validated uh, by the turnout, and we're excited about the partnership between uh, the University of Mpumalanga and the African Presidential Leadership Center, okay. uh, and grateful for the support that we got from the National Lottery Commission. Which is, which is, which is great, I mean, because the, the, the funding is a big issue. And we talk about 50 democratically retired African presidents. It certainly does mean a lot for a continent that's really scourged by a lifetime of undemocratic presidents in the, on the continent. Well, you know, the interesting thing is that uh, these some 50-odd leaders who retired democratically uh, point to a very, very important trend taking place on the continent. And that is, democracy really is taking root, despite all the bad news stories. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, the, the, the bad news is that most of those come from 16 countries on the continent. Okay, so we're only talking 16 countries. But this is the good news. Those are the most heavily populated countries on the continent, and they have an aggregate population of close to 700 million people which means that most Africans wake up every morning in a country where they're able to hold their leadership accountable. And that's a very, very good thing. Well, it is. And, and, and I think what's happening as well is we, we're seeing that the people of Africa are finding their voices. And they're not just sitting back anymore. I mean, we've seen so many of these presidents and leaderships being overthrown by the people of the country. So it, it almost, in a way, is, is, is a lesson uh, two presidents and leaders coming through that you've got to put your people first. It, precisely. One of the comments uh, uh, President, uh, uh, Prime Minister Odinga made is that uh, when he came of age, it was the era of, of, of the telefax. And, and now, you know, we use telephones as personal computers, basically. And so people are able to communicate. And so it means that there's a, a greater transparency, whether folks want it or not. Uh, folks have a great, uh, a f greater fund of knowledge about what government ought to be doing. Uh, and so there's a, a higher level of accountability, and that's a good thing. Yeah. In, in terms of your partnership with the University of Mpumalanga, what is it? How was that partnership developed? Well, they've totally embraced this idea. As you know, they are a relatively new university. Uh, they've committed themselves to being on the cutting edge of training Africa's next generation of uh, young leaders. And what the center does is give them the, uh, the capacity to, to marry, not literally, of course, but to marry former leaders with emerging leaders so that those emerging leaders can get the benefit of the, the wisdom, the insights, the mistakes even, mm. that were made in the past so those, those are not duplicated in the future. Yeah. Just, just to, to wrap up, I mean, who, who are you hoping will attend this actually program and what does it teach and, and what are the costs associated with it? Just talk to us about the, the, those finer details. Well, the, 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 the first thing is we, we look to, to tap into the wellspring of, uh, the, of leadership experience in this region. Uh, you've got folks like uh, 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 Tabo and Becky, uh, Rupu, uh, Rupia uh, Banda, uh, 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 among others that you yeah, can name. Yeah. We want to give young people on this campus and in campuses on the region access to the, the, those leaders. Um, when we do major policy events, we would see uh, leaders coming from around the country, around the continent to uh, participate. So uh, maybe a Jerry Rollins uh, or a John Kufour from Ghana, uh, Jakai Kikwete, 
uh, from uh, Tanzania, all participating in the policy forum that we hope to hold at uh, the University of Mpumalanga. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Great initiative. Uh, Ambassador Charles Stith uh, founded the Boston University's African Presidential Archives and Research Center. Great to have you, and I'm sure we hope to speak to you a lot more. Thanks for having me. Of all of this. It's Thank an absolute pleasure. An absolute pleasure. All right, I'm going to say goodbye to you now and uh, leave.